All right. Ready when you are. Okay, everybody everybody on board then, Sam? Yes. Very good. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome to tonight's meeting of the Oxford, Ohio Board of Zoning Appeals. This meeting is being held virtually under authority of Ohio House Bill 197. Um, Sam, you did confirm that everybody has audio and video? Yes, yes. correct. Thank you, sir. Um, first thing on the agenda is we've got the approval of the May 20th, 2020 minutes. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to those minutes? No, no additions, deletions, or corrections. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you, Roger. Is there a second? Somebody's got a second. I'll second. I'll second. Thank you, Kate. Um, any objection to the approval of the minutes? Without objection, the minutes are approved. We have one case to hear tonight, BZA 2020-04, uh, for a variance to Chapter 1143.10C2 to allow a zero-foot setback for a new sky deck. Do I hear a motion to enter into adjudication? So moved. Thank you, Kate. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you. Uh, any objections? Without objection, we are now in adjudication. Who's going to present for the city? I will, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Zach. Uh, could you state your name and title for the record, please? Yes, Zachary Moore, planner for the city of Oxford. And raise your right hand for me. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth and matters before this board? I do. Please proceed. All right. Um, Sam, if you don't mind making me the host, that way I can share my screen with everyone. Will do. Okay, thanks for doing that. Okay. And can everyone see my screen okay? Any issues? Good. Good? Good. So the case for tonight, um, it's a variance to a front yard setback, and this is at 36 East High Street. The applicant is Mark Wiseman. Um, the property owner is 36 East High LLC. The current use, which is the Brick Street uh, Bar and Music Entertainment Venue, that is the current use. Um, the current zoning is UP Uptown District. And the proposal that's been requested is a variance to section 1143.10 C2, front yard setback. Here is a map showing the location of the property. It's actually two individual parcels um, right there at the corner of North Poplar Street and East High Street. This is in, of course, Oxford's Uptown District, very popular venue in town. And here's a look at the zoning map. So as you can see, the dark red color is the UP Uptown Zoning District, which is a mixed use district, which allows a number of uses, um, including restaurants and, and bars and so forth. So you can see there plainly that it's zoned UP and borders properties that are also zoned UP, Uptown. Um, here were some site photos that were taken on June the 24th. So everybody's probably pretty well familiar with the location. Um, the front entrance being of course out on High Street and then the existing patio which fronts along North Poplar Street. Um, this is the area that is directly behind the patio. This is the um, dumpster enclosure area. Um, and then you can see there's also a portion of the patio that doesn't have a roof overhead and that's right there at the corner of High Street and Poplar. So section 1143.10 C2 provides the following. It provides yard requirements. Um, these are specified for front, side, and rear. And the one that is requested to be varied is a front yard of 16 and a half foot minimum. And this applies to all streets except High Street. So the way it reads there is it's 16 and a half feet minimum, except on High Street, at least 70% of a building must meet the right-of-way line, which 
more or less corresponds to the back of the sidewalks along High Street. Um, but with this being along the Poplar Street frontage, you would take the 16 and a half foot distance and apply it to, to that frontage. Um, with this being a corner lot, there's in essence two front yards. One is taken from High Street and one is taken from Poplar. So it's the Poplar side um, that is being considered with this request. And here's the, to the typical bird's eye view that I provide. So you can see um, the property highlighted in yellow. So you can see the, the front entrance and the marquee there on high and then the side facing on Poplar Street. And then here's a view looking to the west. Notice the alley behind there as well. And this is that dumpster enclosure that I pointed out earlier in this location. Here is the applicant's submitted site plan. And I'm just gonna go through the existing conditions first. So the main building is the dark blue color. And I've went ahead and highlighted in yellow just so it's um, a little bit more clear to see. This is what, um, this is the real property boundary for the parcel itself. And the red dash line is delineating the vacated right of way zone, which as it turns out, essentially corresponds to that 16 and a half foot front yard setback distance. So the width of this is 16 and a half feet. Um, so you can see the enclosure is noted in a slightly darker or slightly lighter blue color, which is there on the north side. And then the covered patio area is the light blue. Um, so just to go through some of the prior approvals for the site, this actually has come to the BZA twice in the site's history. The first time was in 1992 and it was to approve that um, medium blue color area for the dumpster enclosure. Um, and that was in order to comply with the city's requirement for a refuse container storage area. And given that the building essentially occupied nearly 100% of the real property, um, that variance was granted in order to comply with that city requirement. And that was by a vote of four to zero in, in favor. Um, that was granted on August 27th, 1992. And then the second BZA case was in 2002. So it's dealing with the virtually the same setback area. Um, and that was approved for the covered patio area um, in 2002 by the BZA. And I'll show you the plans here in a moment that went with that approval. So essentially the request is the really the exact same dimensional variance that was requested in 2002, but the scope has changed. Um, so the proposed sky deck would be located in the area shown in orange. Um, so it's the exact same setback request, which is um, 16 and a half feet, reducing it down to zero. So essentially eliminating the requirement altogether. So the sky deck would replace the existing patio roof um, and also extend the deck 17 feet further south than the current patio roof overhang. Um, basically adding what we would call an additional bay to the south. And these were the plans that were approved in 2002. So you can see um, that what exists today more or less corresponds to what these plans showed. The original plan was to have this, this railing here along the wall. Um, I believe that was actually put in place, but then later removed. So this is um, where you see the existing white colored um, block wall with the kind of tile glass um, blocks. That is the, what you see there today um, for, that, for that wall. Um, so the reason that the variance is, has been brought before the BZA is really two factors. Number one, um, the proposed project would increase the number of stories beyond the scope of these original plans that went with the 2002 decision. Um, and then the second factor is the additional bay, um, which is in this location here. So this um, is being extended 17 feet further south. So for those two factors, the, the increase in the number of stories, so the vertical um, extension of the project, as well as the um, horizontal extension, if you will, further south were the two main factors that are, are driving the reasons for why um, the BZA has to consider a new approval for this request. Um, so these are the renderings that were submitted and these actually were approved by the 
HAPC last week on Wednesday, um, as is. So uh, no conditions with that approval, essentially approved as presented. So they approved of the design of this. So um, so long as the BZA were to grant the variance tonight, um, the next step would be to submit a building permit for review administratively through our office. Um, and then just showing the floor plans. So there are actually two sets of stairs um, that would lead up to the upper deck area. And then here's another view of the elevations that were submitted. Essentially the exact same plans that were submitted for the certificate of appropriateness approval by HAPC were also submitted for the variance request. Okay. And then the final step of my presentation is to go through the decision criteria. So I'll just go through those one by one. Um, so beginning with criterion A, whether the property in question will yield reasonable return, or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. The property's previous and continued use as an entertainment uh, venue is sufficient to demonstrate that there can be beneficial use of the property without the variance. The purpose of the request as stated by the applicant is to reduce indoor occupancy in response to the current COVID-19 pandemic. However, staff feels the evidence contributed is insufficient to demonstrate this criterion supports the variance request because the owner and applicant would have to be deprived of a reasonable economic return. Um, denying the variance would not deprive the owner of continuing to operate the business under the current setup and conditions which may or may not continue to yield a return that is reasonable. So we simply are asking for more evidence toward this criterion in order to determine whether or not this criterion would support the variance request. Regarding criterion B, whether the variance is substantial. So the applicant is asking for a 100% decrease an essential um, elimination of the front yard setback. So on its face, we would find this numerical adjustment to be a substantial request. However, in consideration of the current covered patios previous approval by the BZA in 2002, this raises the question of whether the substantiality of this request should be applied to the overall scope of the project as presented, or only to those portions that are increasing the bulk, scale, and scope of the current patio amenity. Um, we would advise the BZA, they may weigh this criterion from either perspective. The overall height of this replacement structure is estimated to only be about one foot taller. Um, looking to the previous plans, it depicted the roof ridge at about 15 feet in height from grade, while the tallest feature on this proposed project measures right above 16 feet. So even though there is a minimal change in height, we do find that the overall intensity is certainly increasing um, in a vertical fashion, and that's by adding the second story that um, currently is not in existence. Regarding criterion C, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or whether adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. So we would respond by saying Oxford's uptown district, it's characterized by a multitude of locations, restaurants, bars, other venues for social activity and entertainment, especially for college students. Of course, we're a college town. Um, and a sky deck feature could serve to further complement Brick Street as a popular Oxford venue. And um, as of this presentation, we uh, have not received comments from any adjoining property owners that were notified of this hearing. So um, to that end, we don't believe that there will be any um, additional detriment felt by the adjoining property owners if this variance request were granted for a second story sky deck. Regarding criterion D, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services, um, community development staff would advise the BZA to rely on the comments from the fire chief and police chief as found in the staff report. And then of course our uh, Fire and police chiefs were kind enough to join us for tonight. So if you have any questions in regard to this criterion, certainly feel free to direct those to them. Regarding criterion E, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction, 
Um, as Mr. Wiseman's narrative says, he was aware of the restriction and is aware that this request essentially serves as an extension of the project scope that had been previously approved in 2002. Criterion F, whether the property owner's predicament feasibly can be obviated through some method other than a variance. So the owner makes clear in his narrative that the predicament that's faced is the COVID-19 pandemic, which necessitates a policy of spreading out patrons, lessening chances for transmission of the virus. Um, hint is also given, however, at the long-term future of the establishment. Um, thus, the, the request appears to be intended not only to combat the current economic hardship posed by the pandemic, but also serving as a substantial permanent improvement for years to come. Um, we as staff, we recognize the universal truth that COVID-19 has brought about new policies, including social distancing and wearing masks to help prevent the transmission and spread of the disease, and thus certainly has the ability to negatively affect financial return for many businesses, including bars and restaurants. So as to criterion F, among the issues to consider is whether this temporary COVID-19 pandemic, albeit one we, we all hope is as temporary and as short-lived as possible, rises to such a level that this criterion supports a permanent request for a variance. And then finally, regarding criterion G, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. The spirit and intent of the 16 and a half foot setback requirement appears to us to be an aesthetic one as the community has opted for wider corridor envelopes along its side streets as compared to the primary thoroughfare, which of course is High Street through the Uptown District. Various variants and van construction projects have been allowed to occur within this front setback area in Uptown in the past, including such examples as the addition at 45 East High Street, which is right across the street, and the municipal parking garage. However, the concept of a standalone open air deck along the frontage of any side street and within the front setback would be new territory for Oxford's Uptown District. And that concludes the decision criteria and thus concludes my report. I am happy to take any questions. Thank you, Zach. Any of the board members have any questions? I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Chris. Zach, are there any, I couldn't find any, are there any um, regulations or, or specifications in the planning documents that that would support this, the sky deck in any way? What do you mean by regulations? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at criterion G and find a reason to consider this to be within the spirit. In, in my view, um, looking at the spirit and intent of the setback standard, um, as I said, it, it's really about um, the wider corridor envelopes through, um, on the side streets in the uptown district. And I think the only thing that we can really look to for guidance on that spirit and intent is um, other projects in the uptown area um, and other properties in the uptown area. Um, and looking across the district, there really isn't another example of something like this. Um, so this is in a way new territory for us. So um, I guess the answer to your question is we really don't have anything else to go off of other than um, just kind of a general idea for what the, in, the spirit and intent behind this standard really is, which is just to preserve those wider corridors. Okay, and at, at uh, 45 East, that happened a, a few decades ago, if I remember right, is that correct? Um, I don't remember the exact year for that. Um, if, if I could jump in, I think it was around 1982, maybe. That's that's what I'm remembering as well. Uh, Give or take a year. What's the it you're talking about, the setback uh, variance for 45 yeah. East? Exactly. And, and I assume planning has had an opportunity to review the regulations since that was put in and has declined to add something to support it. 
we we don't have any additional um, regulations um, that go with this front yard setback standard. Um, the the language that the code mm -hmm. expresses is pretty much did as it pertains to the setback. Um, let me see if I can, I can jump in there, um, Mike. If it's okay, while Zach yes, is looking, please. Uh, Chris, the uh, the vacation of right of ways happened in 1853. Um, and then the code that has the front yard setback has been in effect for several decades. Okay. So, you know, obviously there's been a lot of staff turnover, a lot of projects, you know, a lot of changes since then. So, um, and, and historically the way uh, cases are presented and the way the code requires it is the applicant's responsibility to provide the evidence. And so, we're kind of grasping at whatever we can find and I appreciate the question, uh, but that's about all we can offer. So I hope that helps a little bit. Yes, Get, it does. Give you a little bit of a, yes, uh, a background. Yep, thank you, I'm done. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, nobody else has any questions. Who's going to be presenting for the appellant? I will start out, then Mark will add, add on to that okay. as well. Okay. Uh, Zach, can you get us back to home screen there? Thank you. Please state your name for the record. Bob Riggs. And are you the agent for the appellant? Yes. Okay. Raise your right hand for me, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth and matters before this board? I do. Please proceed. Okay. As Zachary stated, uh, when we submitted this, Mark came to me asking about uh, creating this sky deck several months ago um, as the pandemic was fully engulfing, um, closing down businesses. Uh, one of the big things that came out of that was trying to create a much safer environment for uh, Brick Street. Uh, one way to do that based on all the scientists' information is to have people outside versus inside. So this was before we even talked about adding the sky deck. It was just how do we make things safer as things start to open back up and create a safer environment for the, for the entire um, building. So that's when we started looking at the possibility of taking the, the deck um, in this, taking the roof off and adding the deck in the same location. So we started looking at that and realized that we, if we add that second deck, we can increase some square footage. Uh, we can allow people to get outside. We can allow people to separate. Um, if we add the stairs out to the street level, we can minimize people standing out at the street level on both the first floor and the second floor, have them back off the street edge and disperse people out in a, in a manner that um, keeps, them, keeps them separated. Uh, as part of this project, uh, we are not looking to add any occupant load to the building, the overall occupant load just to spread the occupants out and get more people outside versus inside um, to allow them to be obviously in a safer, safer format. Um, as Criterion A stated, um, will, will this yield a reasonable return? Um, with the mandates now and some of the issues that have been set up about the percentage of people that are allowed in the facility, uh, having people outside, this we, we feel would help um, increase the chances of a reasonable return based on having people outside and not having to decrease to 20% and have people inside. And the confidence level of the people coming to this to the establishment would increase because they could feel they could be outside in an environment that's less likely of, of contracting um, a virus or um, anything such as that um, in the future. Um, we don't feel that it's a, a substantial um, Variance based on criterion B because the the setback was was awarded in 2002, and we're going vertical with it, and not we're not increasing the the footprint of the existing building or the deck and outside of the footprint that was already established. Um, and as Zach said, the character of the neighborhood is not altered. Um, we got approval from HAPC last week based on the architecture of this to try to complement the existing building. In doing so, we're taking down the, the block and, and uh, glass block 
partitions that go between the columns to open up the area and be more airy like the variance initially stated in 2002 to have it be more of an open air patio, which is what we'd be going back to putting a railing across the, the poplar side to be more of an open air railing. And that would match the railing that's there now on the north on the high street and poplar corner. And as we get to the second floor, we would uh, have the railing up high enough to meet building code, uh, to meet the, the, the force of uh, being able to push the, the railing over. Um, and in doing that, that's why we added the columns up to match the columns down that are down below to give us anchor points to be able to anchor those, those railings across the entire poplar length of the space. So the biggest part of this, like we said, is for safety reasons, um, to allow more people to be outside, to have revenue uh, return as occupant, occupancy is allowed to return to the building. Um, and then also, like we said, with the stairs, uh, minimizing the risk of people being out on the street edge by having those stairs there so people are not congregating against that poplar side rail that they would be back closer to the building edge. Um, and Mark, if you want to add add some more to that. Mark Wiseman, are you online now? Yeah, hold on one minute. Am I, yeah, I think I'm off mute. Can you see me? We can see you. If you're going to testify, I need you to state your name for the record. Mark Wiseman. And are you the appellant or agent or the owner? The owner. Okay. Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth in matters before this board? Yes. Please proceed. Yeah, so I, I think Bob uh, did a good job kind of spelling out our rationale behind this. In fact, um, <laughs> early on in the pandemic, I drove to Greenville, South Carolina. I wanted to get a feel for how they manage some of the rooftop bars. It's an area that's grown kind of like Charleston and Austin, Texas, and some of these other areas, Nashville, that that, that have a lot of these rooftop bars. And, and, and really, I wanted to understand more about it in the context of how can we incorporate that at Brick Street uh, in, in a way that, um, again, allows our patrons to spread out more to the outside, not increasing our occupancy, but creating Have we lost Mark? Yeah, I lost him. I can't hear him. Let's give him just a minute, see if he can. In a scenario where we can spread. All right, all right. Sorry, am I? You're you're back. back. You're fine. You're back. Yeah, I just see a picture that says that your internet connection is unstable. I've been called unstable before, but uh, <laughs> this is the internet. But you know, really, the driver was, you know, what what can we do to create a. a, a great experience which we prided ourselves in but make it safer in light of this pandemic and you know what we really view as is unprecedented times i think you know zach commented you know we don't know whether this COVID pandemic is short term we don't know whether we're in phase one uh whether there's a phase two that could be coming whether it's something that's going to be around for a longer time um what I've learned throughout this process, really going back to the beginning of April, is a, is a consensus in the, in the science community that people outside, whether it's the flu or whether it's COVID, and certainly COVID being airborne or something that is, is transmitted through that, that form, is in, in some estimates 20 times less likely to happen outside versus inside. So we, we looked at this is is really you know part of being able to survive and being able to offer something and in that that again creates a safer uh, environment in light of kind of an unknown that we're faced with and so we feel this accomplishes it as, as bob noted we're not looking for additional occupancy and i think chief Deathridge knows and some of the other additions that we've made over the years that's not been our intent it's really been around taking what we have and spreading people out and given the nature of this pandemic we thought this was a uh, uh, you know a, a very positive type move that we could make uh, in light of you know extraordinary times 
you know, certainly, you know, undeniably uh, down the road, if, if, if this thing burns out or subsides and becomes less of an issue, yes, we have a sky deck. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't change the fact that we're not looking to generate more revenue. We're looking to improve the whole experience and, and make the place safer, whether the pandemic persists for a long time or whether it doesn't. Um, right now, though, that is obviously the core driver for us. So I'm happy to answer any other questions around our rationale if any of the members um, have any. Board members, any questions? Sure, Roger. Uh, yes, Mark, what policies and procedures have you put in place? If the object is to get separation of people, what procedures and policies have you put in place to keep the balcony from becoming overcrowded on a nice summer night when everybody wants to be outside? Yeah, so, so Roger, you know, right now, obviously we are, um, we have to be compliant with, with the current guidelines relative to the pandemic. So we currently have a plan both on the outside patio, the, ex the existing outside patio and the inside where we have tables um, spread out to meet the requirements. Um, Does that stop people from standing around with a drink in their hand? That's well, the, you know, and, and I'll be very candid with you. We've been open maybe three days since we were allowed to open. We have, have yet to really open all summer. So we open um, just a couple days only on the outside patio. And look, you know, to be honest, it, it is, it's a challenge across the board right now. So we have everybody sitting at tables. Really, we are closer to 10 feet apart. And yeah, it requires enforcement. There's no doubt about it, but it's been manageable. And again, I don't have a lot of history on it because this is all new to us. We have always been a place that's been about congregation and people being together. And so now we've had to pivot to having tables throughout the place six feet apart and really not letting people stand because you're, you're not allowed to stand a with a drink. Um, you, we, we really are intent going into the year is strictly to have people sitting at tables and then have a server come to the table, which is very different from what we do. But as it relates to the new proposed sky deck, while, you know, everything is subject to change, um, our objective with the sky deck is to make it more of a, of a, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, an area to chill um, where we have some couches, we have tables. And again, this is, this, you know, obviously everything with COVID is subject to change, but our intent as we look at it is that it's not going to be an area like the, the lower level or like the main part of Brick Street. It's more for people to spread out more and not have massive crowds up there because that we, we understand that would invite more risk. But we're certainly going to have people today spread out per the guidelines from the Board of Health in the state of Ohio. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're at at this at this point. And we'll obviously have a you know a full staff you know keeping an eye on it. We'll we will have somebody at the base of the stairs limiting how many people can go up because part of it is if they get too many people up, it kind of compromises the experience for what the intent of that is. And it is to have people more spread out. I assume there will be access from the upper floor also. Um, not, not at this point. We, we, we looked at that as a potential option. So right now the only access is from the outside, if, if that's what you're Questioning. So there's, yeah, that is, that is my, my, yeah. So right now there's two sets of stairs. One of the things, you know, that, that came up in the HAPC meeting was, um, you know, hiding the stairs a little bit more. So we, we've certainly explored where the stairs go up to Skybox now. There's an outside entry into Skybox in the open air patio. There's a landing at the main level, and we've explored that option. Um, as making that one of the access points in lieu of one of the sets of stairs, but we would have two stairs regardless. And right now they are positioned outside. Okay, just as a follow-up to the chair, uh, Mr. Weissman mentioned Chief Deathridge. I would like to hear Chief Deathridge and Chief Jones's opinions. 
we'll get to that, Roger. I appreciate that. And we will let him uh, have an opportunity to speak. Are there any more questions for Mark? Uh, Mark? Mike? Yes, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Mark or, or Bob, uh, when would this be, be constructed? When would you have it online? Um, I, Bob, I can, can answer that. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, there, it, there's going to, there's going to be time involved. It's not going to happen in the, in the fall semester. One window perhaps would be the, the Thanksgiving break because students are leaving uh, for an extended period of time. So that presents an eight week window, weather permitting. Um, if it didn't happen in that time, it would likely have to be in the summer of 2021. So those would be the two windows. And of course, you know, we have to understand the, you know, the, we haven't gotten deep into the financial component relative to the four or five months of being shut down as a business. Understand. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you Chris. I, have, I have a question. Yes, um, Kate. Is there a second story to the main building? Yes. Kate. Okay. Yeah, there's two sets of stairs that go up um, to what we call the skybox, which is about a couple thousand square feet. And that's inside. That's inside. inside. Okay. It's, it doesn't cover. It does not cover the entire square footage of the existing building. It's more on the high street end of the building. It extends out probably to about where that door is on the side of the building that goes up to it. Got it. I just wanted to, didn't know that. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Anybody else? I do have one more question. Sure, go ahead, Chris. Have you looked at the uh, air exchanging within the building, improving the, the turnover time to cut down on the COVID? Yeah, you know, we're, we're meeting uh, next week with our, uh, with Schneider Electric to go over what else we can do. Um, about we doubled our capacity several years ago. So we have, we have two relatively new 35 ton units. So it's a, it's, it's a very robust um, newer system for the inside, but we do want to meet to see what else we can do on the inside to, you know. Does that bring in more safer or is that recirculating? I'm sorry. The, HVAC systems you have, are they designed to recirculate primarily or do they bring in outside air? You know, I, I believe they bring in outside air, but I have to tell you that's, it, it's, it's a little bit out of my bandwidth. I'm not, I, I, I don't have, the, I, I would rather have somebody. Bob, would you? Would you I, don't know the, I don't know the existing ones for sure. Um, my assumption would be they have outside air of some capacity but what percentage it is, I, I do not know. I believe it. they circulate the outside air and cool off, but again, um, I, I would have to check on that. Okay, I'll thank make, you. I'll make a note of it. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? Okay. Um, both Chief Dethridge and Chief Jones have made comments on this. Uh, going through the paperwork that we've got. Uh, John Dethridge was first. Chief, are you online? I am. Would you like to participate in this? I sure can. Okay, state your name and title for the record, please. John Dethridge, Fire Chief of the City of Oxford. And raise your right hand for me. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth and matters before this board? I do. Please proceed. Um, I did uh, provide some comments into the packet. Um, so I'm sure you guys are aware Brick Street's a place that uh, there are a lot of calls for service. Um, and uh, my concern with this is uh, um, basically the same kind of issues that we have with the um, balcony area on the inside is occasionally we have people that end up going over that rail for one reason or another and becoming injured. Um, you know, this is another one of those things that looks like it could lead into to items like that. Um, you know, just trying to do my job and uh, point those things out to, uh, 
you know, try to keep the students that are there that are uh, usually partaking in uh, the consumption of alcohol and um, try to keep those folks safe. Um, one other thing, one other caveat I'd like to throw in there, uh, Mark was speaking about the, um, the occupancy of the building. I think it's probably, uh, probably a good thing to let everybody know that the occupancy of that building, um, the number that they use currently is a uh, grandfathered number from the fire code, I believe in the 80s, that's based on three square feet per person. And uh, the current fire code is uh, five square feet per person. So when, uh, when they're at capacity, that, that building is full. Thank you, sir. Um, any board members have any questions for the chief? I, I have a question. Please go ahead. Yeah. How, how, how high will the railing be? Does anybody, nobody's ever said the exterior well, railing, how, how high will it will? Uh, he, he's the railing is walking, you know, is it 42? Yeah, the railing is shown at 42 inches, which is what guard guardrail height is, standard for a code. So that it's not only height, but it has to withstand a certain amount of force. So it would be des designed to handle the amount of force required by the building code to keep it from from falling or being pushed over. Let me let me ask a question here. Did did I understand you that the railing on the sky deck is only going to be 42 inches tall? Is that right? Uh, that, it's consistent with what it is on the inside. I think that's the code. That's the current code height for for exterior railing. Is, is it 42 inches or at least 42 inches? It's minimum of 42 inches, so it could okay. be taller. Thank you. Okay. Um, and that's what the railing is on the inside that Chief Dethridge on the sky box that you guys referred to earlier. 40, yes. it is 42 inches? Okay. Correct. Okay. Uh, any other board members have questions for the chief? Okay. Uh, Chief, stand by. We may have some more questions for you. Um, before we go to Chief Jones, Mark, I'm going to ask, if 42 inches is the minimum, would you be willing to increase that height uh, out of concern and safety for the patrons? Yeah, I, I don't I don't see an issue with with increasing it if that, if that makes it safer and it and it, you know, and it's within reason. I mean, I think we, we got to find a balance safety's first and foremost but obviously you don't you know you don't want it so high that it, it makes it awkward but absolutely you know i'm open to suggestions any and all that that um that that make it safer that's Great. that's not an issue so if it needed to be 46 inches i know that doesn't seem a lot but that's you know another 10 percent higher or whatever that comfort level is i'm certainly uh i'm willing to work with with the city on that. Okay. Um, along that line, Chief Dethridge, if you're still online, is there is there a preferred height that you would like to see for this? Well, I really hadn't really thought about it, but something that uh, would deter people from falling over it, I think would have to be probably significantly higher than 42 or 46 inches. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, Chief Jones, are you online? Yes, I'm here, sir. Would you like to participate in this? Yes, I am able to. Okay, please state your name and title for the record. Sure, John Jones, I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Oxford. And would you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in matters before this board? Yes, I do. Please proceed. Sure, I don't know. Uh, I provided comments on this after reviewing it. Um, you know, I, I, I think my comments are there. I share the concern of the height of the railing. Um, I'm not an expert in building construction, so I don't know the exact height that it should be. Um, but anything we can do to prevent someone from being pushed over or falling over um, would be beneficial. I understand Mr. Wiseman's concern with uh, the experience, and if you're sitting there, you want to be able to see out. So I've, you know, I've been to uh, rooftop bars, and and they are a, a good experience. Um, but you know, the, the, 
um, we just got to balance public safety with it. And so economic development, um, you know, that's what uh, we're always balancing with public safety. And I think it is a good amenity, but, uh, uh, but we just got to be able to control that. And I think uh, the Oxford Police Department prides itself on being able to, you know, you build something and we'll respond to it and handle it. So um, we have worked with Mr. Wiseman um, probably more so in the past two years than we have in the past um, in improving different elements of safety there. Um, I think as long, you know, if that relationship continues and he's willing to add the security staff that uh, we, um, we think is appropriate and having people ready to respond right there on the balcony um, and also monitoring the situation, you know, I think that's something that we can work with. So those are, those are the big concerns. And I took this before uh, my command staff meeting and uh, tried, you know, got comments. And, and that's really the biggest concern, that and people throwing something from the top. It just seems like uh, uh, sometimes in, in, in that atmosphere, people are more willing to toss a beer bottle uh, out into the street. So if he has the appropriate staff monitoring the situation, uh, I, I think that can be uh, mitigated as well. And I, I'd be happy to, more here probably to answer questions uh, then give my opinion on the whole matter. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any questions for the Chief from the board members? Chief Jones, I got a question. You, you've you talked about working with uh, Mark Wiseman and uh, I know that we've had some problems with people falling over railings and this actually is more for uh, you and Chief Dethridge. Can you give us an idea as to how many falls there have been over a particular period of time? Uh, as far as falls, I'll leave that to Chief Death. Well, I have a report in front of me that uh, breaks down the calls for service. Um, it's a CAD report. This one's from 2018. Just because of the way it breaks it down, I can provide that fairly easy. And I showed two in 2018. Um, now I have no idea what the extent of those were. That could just be a fall down the stairs or a fall in front of the building. It's it's definitely it's one of our more popular places, and there's a lot of calls for service. Um, but um, uh, again, we we work with their staff. A lot of the calls for service that I see in this report are uh, self or officer initiated calls. You know, maybe for an intoxicated person or a disorderly subject, but it also kind of includes um, traffic stops, which really aren't associated with Mr. Wiseman's bar, just where the officer stopped the car. Um, and, uh, you know, some other other calls. So uh, I, I don't know. Chief Dethridge might have a better idea of as far as actual falls. Okay. Um, um, can I, I'm sorry, can I? Could, could I answer, could I comment on that? Yes, please do. Yeah. So, and, 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 and I might very well be missing something, but certainly in my, in our 14 years and our father was there since 1992. So call it a 28 year period. I'm only aware of, of one legitimate fall off the sky deck to the, to the lower level. I mean, there have been falls and chief death or shows and we, we, call the police and we're, we're, we're overly uh, cautious in calling about a lot of stuff, but, and we've had falls, but in terms of somebody over that railing in sky deck in sky box, I, I only recall one instance where somebody literally fell over it onto the floor and thank God, you know, was okay. And it was, we, we were all very fortunate for that, but I maybe have missed something. That's just all I recall over the 28 period as it relates to a fall from skybox to the lower level. From Thank the you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Chief Dethridge, could you add anything to this commentary? Yeah, I want to say, I know for a fact I was there, I want to say it's been in the last three to five years. Personally, I was there on one that fell over the rail. And I want to say there was another one right about that same time that, uh, that I actually wasn't there for. Okay. Mike? Yes, go ahead, Roger. 
Uh, question for Chief Jones on the, you, know, you started talking a little bit about the risk to the outsiders. Do you perceive a safety uh, problem with pedestrians on the sidewalk or even traffic in the street? And a follow up to Mark, <clears throat> if people don't walk, do they throw stuff off the sky box onto the dance floor? So it's a double question. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I mean, I, that would just be my concern is if if somebody were to do that. But uh, like I said, I think that can be mitigated with staff being there, and if they see something, uh, responding right away and kicking the person out of the bar. Um, um, you know, as has been mentioned, we don't have any sky decks in that uptown district, so my experience is more of like rooftop parties, um, in you know more residential districts. Uh, uh, where we've had those concerns, but uh, you know, it's happened. It's happened, you know, on the sidewalk uptown from some of the the, the apartments above businesses where they've dropped things down. Um, I don't know of any serious injuries caused by that, but certainly the potential. And so that's why I would just, um, if this is built, I would just ask Mr. Wiseman to focus on that concern. that answer your question, Roger? Well, to follow up to Mark, do you have a problem with people throwing stuff inside that we don't see? I mean, of course it happens from time to time. Um, <clears throat> as, as Chief Dethridge said, we, we, we do get very busy and with, uh, with a lot of people in there and a college environment and that demographic. From time to time, things happen. I wouldn't characterize it as a problem. Um, we, we address it you know, as quick as we can. We're not saying we catch everybody, but I certainly don't by any stretch think it's a free for all. And people know if they do throw something and get caught, they're kicked out. And in a best case scenario, in a worst case scenario, they could end up arrested. So we, uh, we, we have a, a, a very, very large crowd staff that we believe is, is highly trained. And, and we do work closely with the police and we are uh, watching the place closely, but you know, things have gotten thrown. I'm not going to say they haven't, it, it happens from time to time, but I don't see it as a, as a problem per se. It's just something as a result of so many bodies in there that occasionally somebody acts like an idiot. And <laughs> if we, we, we catch it, you know, we, we deal with it. And I, and I think outside and, and it is a, it's a legitimate point. I mean, if, somebody wants to take a chance and do something like that, we'll have people up there. It's not going to be the, the level of density is, is the main floor and it's lighted and it's across the street from the police station. And I, you know, that would really be a foolish thing to do, but I can't sit here and tell you that would never happen. <laughs> We've been doing this too long, but, but I don't think it'll be a problem. We will address it swiftly. I got, a, I got a, okay. another question. Uh, this is for the chiefs, both chiefs. Uh, it's about the issue of stairs in general and safety, not so much throwing things, but access. Like, can you describe or talk about any of your concerns about working in an establishment where there are stairs that you might have to go up, your people might have to go up? Okay, Chief Jones, do you wanna make a comment to that or answer? Sure. As I get older, it's harder to climb stairs, so I have to run, <laughs> harder to run up them. But uh, 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 no, that's I mean, we were, you know, for us, it's not as big of a problem as probably the fire department who may have to haul someone downstairs. Um, so uh, I don't I don't know that it's going to hinder us other than, um, you know, when we go in, it's going to take us just a little bit longer to get up there. But I'll defer to Chief Deathridge on that. Chief Dethridge, you have a response? Sure. Yeah, usually in bars, I mean, and it's not just Brick Street, it's other bars in town that have steps. Um, usually they're wet and they are very slippery and that makes it tough for us to navigate them. And it usually is what has caused a problem. Um, I can tell you, we pick up people in a lot of the bars in town that are at the bottom of steps and, um, Usually that's they're inebriated and there's wet stairs and that's not a very good good uh, situation. 
Thank you, both chiefs. Anybody else have any questions or comments? I have a question for uh, Chief Jones. Do you have any problem with the noise level presently coming from Brick Street? And if you think you double the occupancy, you think we're gonna have a problem with the, the new noise level? Well, let me step in here for just a minute. Dan, do you mean noise from the existing patio? Yes. yes. Okay. And this is not going to increase the occupancy of the building. I so, mean, you're going to double the space that produces noise. You're going okay. to have you're going to have noise coming from the first floor and from the second floor now. So okay. that should there should be more theoretically double the noise. Will that put it over the limit? Go ahead, Chief Jones. Sure. Well, certainly it can get loud there uh, with uh, as pe as you know more people are sitting there. Um, I think maybe the the issue might only present itself during the day. Uh, you know, when people maybe on a Friday or Saturday afternoon are there, and if it grows in a crowd and uh, the voices are loud, music's real easy to take care of because I just walk over there and would tell Brick Street it's too loud, and they would turn it down. Uh, uh, they're pretty responsive uh, when I go over there, but uh, um, as far as crowd noise, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's an issue, um, and especially if if uh, they, their their business models change to more of a seating arrangement, and you don't have the crowds on the the patio. I, I just I don't uh, you know I I don't think so. Uh, like I said, economic development, you're kind of uh, it's a trade-off. You trade off a little bit of public disorder with it as well um, in that, you know, that type of environment. So um, I, I don't think it's anything we can't deal with is I guess my point. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions or comments? One thing I would, I would add to the discussion of the railing height. If you look at the drawing, the second floor columns extend up four foot eight to the bottom of the uh, cast stone pilasters that sit on top of it. So right now that the railing shows 42 inches tall, there's space there to go up to four foot eight and not increase the size of the columns uh, that are supporting those. So that's, that's something that could be um, a discussion point if approved and moving forward. Okay, and Zach is getting some drawings on the screen for us. Right. If you go to that drawing right, right there and zoom in, that that new CMU pilaster is four foot eight to the bottom of the cast stone top. Okay, great. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, anybody else have anything? Is there a motion to reconvene the regular session? Uh, I move. Thank you, Kate. Is there a second? I second. Any objections? Without objection, we're back in regular session. Uh, this portion of it is for board members discussion only. Uh, if you do have a question for any of the people that have offered testimony, we can backtrack on that for a clarification, but I'd prefer to stick with the testimony that's been given so far. So board members, uh, discussion or a motion? Uh, well, I, I did have a, I don't know if it's a question. I don't know what this is, but my, it's a question that somebody asked Chris or Dan or someone about how will the establishment, this is not increasing the occupancy, but the question then for me is how will, how is the occupancy already, um, set? And we heard from Chief Dethridge that it's a grandfathered in occupancy, but that's, They've got an occupancy now, so that occupancy level will stay the same. How will it be monitored both at the entranceway and then on the different floors? I'm thinking that's gonna have to be monitored by staff at the door. Um, just real quick, Mark Wiseman, is that correct? Yeah, we, we, we actually have a, um, a, a, a wireless system. We've got a, uh, through the internet and we've got counters that feed into a central system and Chief Dethridge knows if, if he comes, he can, he can get an accurate reading of how many people are in the building in different areas. So we, we actually have people 
at each entrance, counting people coming in, counting people leaving, and that feeds to a central database, which gives us a running total at all times. It's, it's something that we monitor very closely and it's, and it's a result of Chief Death, Deathridge. I've, 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 I've said there, you know, nobody has, I don't know a town in the country that gets more occupancy checks than Oxford and that's a compliment. You okay, know, that's a lot of these towns, so, but we, that's how we monitor it. So if you come at any time, we can tell you how many people are in the building. So days. not so, but but what about the social distancing thing? I guess there's state, there are new state oh, regulations on that. Yeah, and I can, I can, right, and I can, and Kate, I can answer that as well. So right now we're pretty much relegated to tables. You technically can congregate with maintaining social distance, but you can't have a drink in your hand. So the the the, the spirit of the law today is that people sit at tables six feet apart. Now that'll obviously at some point change. If it doesn't, it'll be a moot point. None of us will be around. But today you have to have tables six feet apart. And so we are there to monitor the main patio, the inside of the place to make sure that people stay at their tables. And if they get up to go to the restroom, they come back and, and go to their table. And and look, it's, it's uncharted territory. We were shut down basically at the end of last year. So we're going into this and every we've been planning every week we've maintained our full salaried staff throughout the whole pandemic so we've walked through all the protocol but we'll have people there monitoring and we're going to have people that come in and they're going to be assigned tables and if they get up and they start co-mingling and they're not social distancing they'll they'll ultimately have to leave along with other requirements thank you mark um again this portion of the meeting is really for the board members to discuss their ideas about this. I appreciate your clarification. I asked for that, I appreciate it. Any other board members have any comments? Mike. <clears throat> yes, go ahead, Chris. Okay, as you know, I, I believe uh, in following the, the, the idea of the, the tenant that we don't legislate and, uh, and that our job really is to look at the rules and regulations and look for and help people who uh, kind of fall through the cracks. Uh, in this case, I, there are a couple of things that, that stuck out. The first is uh, that this is new territory that was said several times and there currently isn't any regulations that would allow this kind of a, of a sky deck. Uh, I would recommend and I'll, I'll vote this way that it go back to planning and not be a variance. I also uh, was interested in how soon they could have the sky deck up and running because if it was in the fall, then uh, you, know, there, you could argue that there's a COVID uh, benefit to having the sky deck. But if it's not available until after the students go home, or into the summer of next year, uh, first planning has an opportunity. And second, uh, the COVID argument is greatly reduced in my mind. I, I figure that this is a shorter term than summer uh, problem. Thank you, Chris. Well stated as always. Anybody else on the board have comments? Well, I just wanna follow up, uh, Chris, that's a good point. I'm a look. I'm concerned about a permanent solution to a, a temporary problem. Anybody else? Okay. Can we get a motion on this, please? Uh, I'll move to uh, consider this uh, motion. Uh, motion, I'm trying to get to the page. Uh, case BZA 2020-04, is that what we're talking about? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Uh, yep, I move. Move to grant the variance or move, move to, 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 oh. Oh, okay, so move to, well, what, it, uh, sorry, I, let me just hold off for a second. Chris, did you, what are our options here? Maybe, maybe Sam. Chris Connor. 
What? So, sure, I can I can chime in here if that would be helpful. Sam. If I think the best thing for you to do is go through the decision standards and you can either do that before a motion, uh, Kate, or if you'd like to make the motion to either approve or deny, then you can go through the decision standards after that. And I would recommend going through them one by one. Yeah. Um, and if you if you are making the motion and you know that there are a couple of the decision standards that you believe have either been uh, that would support the variance or would not support the variance, then you could identify those or you could simply make the motion to grant or deny and then the whole board could go through the standards, however you'd like to do it. Okay. Well, the third option would be to grant the variance with conditions. Correct. I'll we'll have to vote on that, yeah. I, I have a question for the board members. Do you think 33 foot six is tall enough for the rail or do you think it needs to be four, four foot? I don't members? think it's tall enough. You don't think it's tall enough, Kate? 42 inches? No. Um, Chris, what do you think? Chris Allison. Okay, my, my sense is that that's not really what we're, we're being asked to vote on, but that's something that should come in in the, in the building planning discussion. We're being okay. asked to, to vote on the variances to allow a change in footprint. Thank you, Chris. Roger Ames, do you have a comment? Place conditions on it, Chris, such as a higher fence, no egress from the inside skybox. So everything is, all the egresses from the, from the outside. We can place those uh, restrictions within the variance by our own regulations. Yeah. You are correct, Roger. I, I also look at uh, what's happening now with 45 East, where they were they were limited to one story. And I truly believe that if they had had a skybox, we'd now be seeing a two story. I don't know if that comes into our thinking here or not. No, Chris, and it really does not. And we need to concentrate our discussion on this case and this address. Okay. Uh, we really, really should not be bringing in information from another address. And also the case is really about the setback, not about the sky deck. I mean, it's sure. not the whole thing, but we're really talking about this approving well, a, a setback on top of a previous I think approved setback. Both. The, variant, really? the ver original variance was for a single story and now they're asking for a two story. Yes. Okay. Okay, so according to what Sam just said, if I make a motion to approve, then we have the option to go through the Duncan standards, talk about it, and then we can vote yay or nay. Correct. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm, I make a motion to approve the uh, 20, the number. Sorry. Um, uh, case number 2020-04, EZA case number 2020-04. I make a motion to approve. Um, then let's go through the Duncan standards if we can and get kind of a board feel on that. And I'll try to make it faster than what we did at the last meeting. That was pretty laborious. Um, Mr. Chair, I think you need a second on that. Okay, is there a second? Thank you, Sam. No one's going to second. Going once, going twice. I'll the, second it. Roger, you're going to second. Is that right? Yes, I'm second it. Okay, second by Roger Ames. Now we can go through the Duncan standards. <clears throat> um, on criterion A, the property will or will not re yield a reasonable return or can and cannot be used beneficially without the variance. Um, Obviously, they've got an ongoing business. They can continue that business without the variance. Um, so in my estimation, this would not be a criterion to support a, a variance. Anybody object to that? No. No. Um, criterion B, the variance is or is not substantial. Um, looking back at the history here and in, in basically eliminating the setback for the patio, uh, I think that's accurately put that this wouldn't make this, uh, it is not a substantial variance. So any objection to that, 
Yeah, I object yeah, to that. I, I, I think to disagree. Yeah, I say it is substantial because it's a 100% setback. Now it's a second story of a setback that already exists, but it's still 100%. Okay, Roger, did you that have a comment? My point also, since it is a second story, we're looking at the variance that was approved on the fourth floor. I think it does make the second story a substantial variance. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, so we're kind of evenly split on that, whether it is or is not. Uh, the essential character of the neighborhood would or would not be substantially altered. <clears throat> and adjoining properties would or would not suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. Um, I think we're looking to improve the uptown and I think uh, it's trying to improve the experience at the bar. So I don't think that uh, this would have any detriment to the neighborhood and it would not uh, have any substantial detriment to the other properties. Everybody okay with that or is there an objection? Fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. Chris, Allison? Yes, I'm fine with it. Okay, great. So we're unanimous on C. Um, variance would or would not adversely affect the, the delivery of governmental services. We didn't specifically address that with either Chief Dethrich or uh, Chief Jones, but lacking comment that it would um create a problem for it. I think we have to assume that it would not alter the ability to deliver governmental services. Any objection to that summary? Yeah, I object to that. I think it will alter government services in terms of say fire and police. I think that's what the two, to me, that's what the two chiefs were talking about, that it would, it well, would adversely affect their delivery of government services. Well, Chief Jones, uh, just admitted that he doesn't want to go up and down stairs as he gets a little bit older, but uh, I think he's got some younger police officers that can manage it okay. Chief Dethridge pointed out that uh, if the stairs are wet, that can be a problem, but uh, they've got stairs inside too also, and they've got stairs at other facilities. So um, I think overall, it's, it's not going to impede uh, a police officer or fire EMT getting into the building to, to, render services as needed. We okay with that? No, yeah. well, I don't know. To me, it adversely, the term is adversely affects. Okay. Okay, Roger, did you have a comment? Yeah, I believe there is a safety factor, but not an effective delivery factor. Okay, thank you. Uh, e, property owner did or did not purchase property with the knowledge of the zoning restriction. Obviously he did. Uh, and generally that's considered a negative. Um, but having gone through the process to get the variance he did in 2002, uh, I don't think that we can really use that as a negative in our consideration right now. He went through the process, he, he obtained a needed variance. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, Criteria and F, the property owner's predicament can or cannot be obviated through some method other than a variance. Um, I think in this case, it cannot. So that's gonna support the passage of a variance. Uh, he just doesn't have a way around it with the well, current, current regulations, that. with the current regulations, Chris. Uh, you know, I think, I think he could improve the, the uh, airflow inside the building. Um, and I think that given how long it'll be before uh, the sky deck would be available, uh, the, emergent, the emergency would be over. I, I appreciate your comment, Chris, but we're talking about, about a setback here and not ventilation within the building. So- I'm asking if there's some other way to accomplish what he needs to accomplish. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, spirit and intent behind the zone code would or would not be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Um, spirit and intent, I, I, I'm going back to the 2002. Uh, at that point in time, it, it apparently was not a big enough problem for them to say that it would uh, not uh, support the spirit and, and intent. So I think that we're at the same juncture tonight that um, it would be observed and substantial justice done. In other words, it would be a positive to pass a variance on this. I know I'm going to get a pushback. Go ahead, board members. <laughs> You've heard me already. I did. Anybody else? 
Uh, yeah, Zach, Zach spoke earlier about the intent of the uptown area is to have wide sidewalks. Um, and 2002 obviously went against that, but that still is the intent of the uptown areas to have wide, of the zoning, the spirit of the zoning for the uptown areas to have wide sidewalks. Now this doesn't get rid of sidewalks because there's always gonna be that, there's still gonna be that thing there, but what's the line goes against the uh, spirit and intent of the zoning requirement for wide sidewalks. Okay. I think it does. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, any other relevant factors? I don't know that we've brought up any, we've had quite a discussion, but are anybody else have any relevant factors on this? Okay. Um, Go ahead. Your, Kate, your audio's. We kept talking about open air and that presumes we're talking about fall and spring, but there are a lot of months in the winter time. So, this I, I think goes beyond our scope, but there is for an open air sky deck. We're really we're we're not talking about the whole year, so it's just something else to consider. In on the on the petitioner's behalf, it's to his credit that he wants to improve the property only for some part of the year. Uh, but against the argument is like, why would you be doing all this when you're only going to have it working for part of the year? I mean, it's gonna be open air. So the argument that it might be a place where people can socialize with sofas and hang out is a little hard to grasp when you've got the open air around you. So. Just well, I, I agree with you, Kate. You know, it's gonna to have to be temperate weather. It's gonna to have to be dry. You know, it's gonna have limited use. That goes, you know, with not having covering over it. So yeah, I agree with what you're saying there. All right, Kate, you made the motion. It was seconded. Um, in BZA 2020-04, you've uh, moved. I, yes, Roger. I'd like to, at this point, add two conditions to the uh, motion. Go ahead. One, that the fence be moved to the highest possible allowance within the scope of the design to take that outside uh, guardrail up to the, the top of the uh, columns. And two, that there be no egress from the inside to the outside, limited to the two stairways. Okay, the maximum height, as I understood it from Mark Wiseman, was four foot eight inches. Is that what you're proposing? Yes. Okay, and no, no secondary egress to the outside. Um, from the interior of the building. Okay. Kate, you made the motion. Are you okay with those conditions? Okay. So, yeah. Kate. You made the motion uh, to grant the variance 2020-04 to the variance of section 1143.10C2. Uh, which Duncan criteria would you like to apply toward that granting of variance? Man, I made this motion. I didn't know I'd have to do all this stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Goes with the job. Okay. So um, I believe that the, so which ones do apply or do not apply? Do. Do support the passage of a variance. Okay. So to support the passage, I would say... Uh, wait a minute. I've written... written uh, C and F. C and F. Okay. Everybody clear on that? C is that it would not... Have, affect the essential character of the neighborhood. F is that the property owner does not have an alternative. Um, we're ready for a roll call vote. Who's gonna handle the roll call for us tonight? I would, I, excuse me just a second. I, I, I would ask whether or not there was anything else related to based on age, if there were any other rel relevant factors that anyone felt would support the motion. That's, that's the catch all. Yes, let, let me throw in G, the spirit and intent would be withheld by allowing this variance. Would be. I agree. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so granting the variance uh, with B, F, and G is, who's, who's trying to break in? Okay. Granting the variance uh, with the conditions that the railing be moved to four foot eight inches and that there 
be no egress from the inside of the building out. Uh, roll call vote for us, please. Sure, I'll be glad to do that. And I do want to state for the record, Mr. Chair, that we've been monitoring uh, the potential for public wishing to speak, and there have been none during the hearing. Great, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam, can you clarify what the yay and nay vote would be? I'll think, I'll get it. Yay, yay allows the passage of the variance. Chris Connor. To be clear, the passage of the variance with the two conditions. Yes, sir. But I think that procedurally, there ought to be a, a motion to amend the motion to add the two conditions and then second it and then go back to the main motion. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Kate, do you want to do that since you made the motion? I make a motion to amend my original motion to include the two points about uh, uh, requiring the fence be increased to four feet, eight inches, and that there be no egress from the inside to the inside of the building to the outside of the deck. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you, Kate. Is there a second? I second. Dan seconds. Okay, Mr. Connor, does that satisfy? Okay. Uh, it satisfies me. Now we can go that, then to, to go to the new motion with the conditions, and then you can get a second vote on it. <laughs> okay. So we've got to have a new motion with the amendments. Before you do that, to save time, I believe there are two variances that we're voting on. No. The, the variance, there is one variance to one section of the code. We have two conditions to that variance. Uh -huh. Okay, I read this wrong. Okay, I agree. Okay, so Kate has made the motion. She's amended the motion. Is there a, is there a motion to accept and grant the variance under the amended motion? I so move. Thank you, Dan. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Can we have a roll call vote finally? Yes, I will. I will make the roll call. I will start with Mr. Ames. Yes. Mr. Hazeman. Yes. Ms. Ruminaire. No. Mr. Allison. No. Mr. Schnipper. Yes. The motion does pass. The variance has been granted with the two conditions. All right. Uh, let me see if I can find my agenda here, see if we've got anything else. That's the only case we've got for tonight. Um, Sam Perry, is there any new business that we need to attend to? There is none that I have at this time. Thank you. Do we have any cases for our next regular uh, session? Uh, there are. We have until Monday at 5 p.m. to know that answer. So, no, not at this time. Okay. <laughs> and I don't see anything under old business either. Correct. Okay. Is there <clears throat> anything else that the board members want to put in before we adjourn? Well, I'm going to say thanks again. Uh, our May 20th meeting was arduous at least. I appreciate all of you being as patient and persevering through all of that. That was a quite a caseload. You did a great job and I appreciate it. Is there a motion to adjourn? I so move. Is there a second? second. Without objection, we are adjourned. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night.